Welcome to the Dental Implant Practices Podcast, where each episode will explore how to integrate dental implants into your practice and into bone with your host, Dr. Philip Gordon. Hey guys, thanks for being listeners to the show. Go to dentalimplantpractices.com and find all of our resources. Also find us on Facebook, Dental Implant Practices page on Facebook. And go to iTunes and leave me a review on iTunes so we can help spread the message. Thanks. Welcome back to another episode of the Dental Implant Practices podcast. I'm your host, Philip Gordon. And today it's a huge honor for me to introduce our guest, Dr. Michael Tischler. Michael, thanks for being on the show today. Pleasure to be here. Now, uh, I've been a big fan of yours for a while. I've seen... um, a lot of your publications in numerous dental implant uh, magazines. Love a lot of the leading edge cosmetic and implant dentistry you've been doing for a while. But um, some things that you're doing lately caught my attention. So I wanted to reach out and get you on the show. I know that you've got your, your Teeth Tomorrow program in full effect. You're, uh, you've got your own lab that you uh, operate and you are a uh, private practice dentist three days a week in Woodstock, New York. So um, I thought, you know, you've got a lot of neat things going on. I wanted to get a hold of you and see, you know, if if you could share uh, some of your story and success with my audience. Absolutely. Uh, where should I begin? Well, let's let's talk about, you know, after, after dental school. Where'd you get started? Uh, you know, where'd you go to dental school at and how'd you get started in, in dentistry? And then kind of what kind of led into your implant and cosmetic success and then kind of kind of come up to where you're at today? Yeah, absolutely. I went to uh, Georgetown Dental School and graduated in 1989 in D.C. and uh, came back to Woodstock, New York, where I grew up, about two hours north of the city and joined my dad, who had a nice practice here. He used to teach at NYU and he just retired this year after 60 years of practicing dentistry and uh, loved Loved every minute of it, which is he can still practice. About 10 years into uh, practicing, I, I took Carl Misch's training and just fell in love with dental implants. And from that point on, I kind of knew I was going to be a, an implant dentist and got credentialed, diplomat in the ICOI, got my ABOI diplomat status, which is uh, quite a hard thing to achieve, but it was worth it. There's only 500 uh, ABOI uh, dip- diplomats in the world. Right now in Texas, you can be an implant specialist with that credential. Other things, I enjoy lecturing, writing articles, presently the implant editor of dentistry today. I just enjoy implant information in general on every level. And uh, about 10 years ago, I built a, a new facility here in Woodstock, which was, was geared to be an implant center with a surgical suite and nice ICAP machine. And uh, the last 10 years has been amazing. Um, for the last five years, I have uh, focused on exclusively full heart zirconia with a company called uh, Zirconzon, which makes something, a uh, product called Protal. Uh, and the reason I gravitated towards the screw retained full arch Protal uh, zirconia is because after doing all the other options, over the years, it's cement retained, full arch, um, hybrid, and seeing the problems with those. Uh, for the last five years, I've kind of created a proving ground in my practice. So in the last five years, we did about 220 arches of full arch zirconia implant supported prosthetic. And we just ran our study. I just presented at the ICOI annual meeting on the main podium, presented that out of the 220 arches, one to five years in function, we have a 100% success rate of all the prosthesis that we made. Um, In my office, not one chip, not one fracture. Implant uh, success rate is, uh, I'm talking about the ICOI uh, PISA scale of no bleeding, you know, bone loss. We're at 99% of like 1,300 implants. We know that works. And then my dental lab, which uh, Tischler Dental Laboratory exclusively does this full art zirconia as the only product that, that we make. And over the last five years, we've done 200, and, I'm sorry, 2,250 uh, arches of zirconia. And when we ran the numbers there, we have a 99.5% success rate. Out of all those arches, only eight are fractured or chipped. So it's an unbelievably successful prosthetic. Um, The implants do very well with it because zirconia uh, is not porous like acrylic. Um, It's very strong. It has a very high modulus of elasticity, so it splints the implants. So we're seeing a high prosthetic success rate a high implant success rate. And from all that data and learning how to market over the last 10 years, we put it all together and created a franchise called Keith Tomorrow. And Keith Tomorrow is based on the fact that we deliver a provisional the next day. We don't do a chair side provisional. And by doing that, a, a laboratory will make the provisional after taking impressions at the time of surgery. And the patient benefits because the prosthesis for that provisional is polished better, 
stronger. Uh, there's less chair time, and uh, that's what we do. And uh, we, it got, it, in the end, we copy that to Full Art Sequoia. So that's that's the whole story. That's the uh, the highlights of the story. I know it's it's been a lifetime of work and success building up to that. You know, um, I I like you joined uh, my father's practice when I came out of school and had been working with him for about ten years, and then kind of went out and started my own practice also, and then kind of took some courses and fell in love with implants too. So we both share that, but. Uh, of course, I'm I'm by no means an ABOI uh, implant diplomate yet, but that's that's on my horizon, maybe in the in the five to ten year goal. But uh, you know, I, I love what you do. I, I I love the path you've taken, um, and and I like a lot of the things that you're you're setting up because you're looking at ways how to copy your success and put it in a blueprint for others to follow. And, and I think that's great. People that you know maybe know a little bit about full arch. Um, treatment planning or full arch uh, conversions um, may not realize some of the simplifications and some of the processes that um, that you're going through. And unless you've done some of those cases, maybe you don't understand the, the problems that come with that. So um, why don't you start with kind of your process and, and talk about that? Because um, some people might even not, not even know what Pertal Zirconi is, or some people not uh, might not understand, you know, why wouldn't you just cut down an old denture and convert it that day? And you know, what would be the headaches or what would be the problem in that? And, and, and you know, the, the implant um, delivery process and, and the lab communication, all that, you know, it, it's a very choreographed um, kind of an art. And um, I guess you've got an eye, you've got a way to walk through that that just takes all the, um, all the guesswork out of it. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the advantage of a franchise. So whether it be in the food industry or any other franchise, it's a, it's a formula that's been worked out that's being replicated. And we've proven the success of it from a surgical standpoint, prosthetic standpoint, laboratory standpoint, and marketing standpoint. So what Teeth Tomorrow is, is an available option limited to 250 uh, advanced implant dentists. When I say advanced, uh, credentialed, basically uh, have done full arch, whether it be over dentures, hybrids. You, you know how to work with full arch, and you're, you're an advanced implant dentist. We have oral surgeons, we have periodontists, we have general dentists. Basically, we're, we're creating network locations. Right now, we have 30 locations in the U.S., and we've mapped it out with our media company uh, based on zip codes and demographics to be 250 territories. And they're in all the major cities. Each territory is roughly a million to a million and a half people. So when a dentist signs up to see tomorrow, they're going to get a package of everything they need. They're going to, be, they're going to have an immediate brand. And branding is really important. And this brand sets themselves apart. But what it is, is we're talking about full arch tooth replacement, whether somebody's a dentalist or they have failing uh, dental work. And I could talk for hours on treatment planning, but sometimes I'll show cases and people will say, why did you take out teeth that could have been saved? The answer there is that sometimes teeth that could be saved are in the way of something that is better, less expensive, and a longer-term solution for the patient. Um, because when you start talking about when do you replace teeth, you're looking at a lot of things. You're looking at a patient's lifestyle, medical history. Uh, are they xerostomic? Are they abruxo? Um, you know, just so many factors involved. It's not just about perio readings. And so that's a subjective analysis. But in the end, we're giving them a product made out of zirconia. And with the success rate that we've shown over the last five years, you know, for the lab, over 2,000 arches in my office, 200 and something arches, you know, it's, I've never seen that before where there's no problem. You don't see peri-implantitis. You don't see any of these problems. So we are, uh, we're sharing that knowledge and, and success. When when delivering these these prostheses, why don't you walk me through maybe the someone through uh, the the steps in that? Obviously, there's there's either terminal dentition, just, you know, decided by the uh, doctor and patient, and or there's no teeth. Um, now, your your process is a, a CBCT um, guided solution, is that right, or is this? Um, you know, how are we setting these cases up? Obviously, uh, are, are there different implant systems that, that people can use, or do you really strictly promote one type of implant system and then, and then kind of walk someone through that process? Yeah, it's open, it's open to most implant systems. Um, any implant system that could, that could support a hybrid uh, bridge or a bar over denture could be used. There's, you know, most implant systems are applicable here. And no, I, I don't. I don't believe in guided uh, surgery for the, for these full arch cases when you're taking out teeth and doing a veiloplasty. Um, I, I've I've done most of the main guided systems as a academic 
academic lesson. And I found that the, the time needed to prepare for them, the cost involved, uh, some of them are quite expensive, $5,000 for an arch. I mean, the lore is it gives you a chair side provisional at the day of surgery, pre-made, and you know it looks good on paper. The ones I've done, a lot of them didn't work because of various reasons. And I prefer a freehand CAT scan based a protocol where you basically are trying to place the implants, whether on the mandible or the maxilla, with the screw hole headed towards the um, lingual area. So the screw holes don't go towards the facial or the teeth. And that's pretty pretty easy to achieve. Um, if you don't achieve it, then, then we use a multi-unit of oven to redirect the screw hole. But we're not of, of the belief of using multi-unit of ovens on every implant. You don't need to do that. We've proven that. We've also proven that we can do zirconia with zirconia with the same success rate. No bone loss, uh, no no complications, no breakage. Um, basically, we can restore most arches using this Pertau uh, zirconia. And when I say Pertau, this happens to be the most tested zirconia in the world. I mean, Zirkin Zahn is the parent company. They've been around for well over 10 years. There's cases out there now over 10 years with, with the highest success rate seen. Other zirconias now are coming out, but you have to be careful because they haven't been tested for full arch. Um, you know, the sintering process alone, when you shrink it, it's over 11 hours. It's, um, it's, it's something that I really would rather in, on my patients. And what I, what I recommend is to have a product that's been tested. And, and I feel very comfortable with this product. Sure. And that, and that comes a lot from someone like you with, with your type of experience and exposure. I mean, you wouldn't be using anything that you didn't believe in and, um, and wouldn't recommend for others. And I, I think that's, that's a big deal. You've got too much at stake with these kind of cases to be using things that are, you know, not not tested and, and true. So you you're doing, uh, you know, teeth extraction, alveoloplasty, implant placement. I'm guessing five, six, seven, or eight per arch, depending on the case, and setting up cases for lingual access. And you're sending these patients home with with no teeth, right? You're we're stage one. It's just about getting the patients in and. Uh, leveling the bone and, and getting your adequate um, clearance and uh, implant placement, covering up suturing. Obviously, you're getting an impression for the lab, and then uh, you're getting them out the door. Is, is that right? Kind of kind of talk me through that first stage. Obviously, there's, there's a records process. There's all of that, but, but day of surgery, or, or, or do we need to go back a step and talk about the, the planning and then the surgery? Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty accurate there. I mean, the planning process is the same as though you were providing an immediate denture for the patient. So we're going to take all the records. We're going to take all the records, and we're going to go into surgery with a, an immediate denture made, uh, just in case we can't immediately load it. So we always want to have a bailout when when we feel that we we can load the case, meaning we've taken the Ostel readings and we have over sixty for the ISQ numbers. Um, we then take an impression, and I prefer six implants on the maxilla between the sinuses with the distal implants being tilted about 30 degrees. Um, when you tilt the implants 30 degrees with, I know I use biorhizons, we don't need a multi-unit above it at, at that point from, from a passivity standpoint. On the mandible, the same thing. It's five implants between the foramens, 30 degrees distal tilt. The concept here is that we're, we're gonna create a screw retain provisional uh, with a one tooth cantilever. And the same thing, we're gonna copy that provisional for the, for the permanent restoration once we've worked out all the prosthetic steps. We've done immediate load. When I say immediate load, we're delivering the provisional the next day. I'll talk about that in a minute. We've done the cases in four visits, literally four visits, surgery, um, and, you know, all the steps. I, I do the surgery and my, so my partner, Dr. Claudia Patch, does the prosthetic. So we, we've done this in four, in four appointments total. The key to these cases, in my opinion, is adequate aviloplasty. You have to reduce enough bone, um, especially on a maxilla, uh, from a from an aesthetic standpoint, you don't want the patient smiling and showing that junction of the zirconia and the, and and the natural gingiva. I, I I reduce the bone to roughly 12 millimeters of bone in the nasal fossa area. Carry that distal, and on the mandible about halfway down the socket. By doing that, those criteria, I, we've never had a problem with, with all the arches we've done. Now, did you say 12 millimeters uh, on the maxillary from from a what land point? Well, I basically. Do I look at the CAT scan, and I do a, and depending on whether the patient has natural aviloplasty or there's a lot of bone there, I place a 12 millimeter implant in the, in the anterior region, the forefront implant, the nasal fossa area. And I, I want the platform of the implant to have 12 millimeters of bone 
to the nasal fossa. Um, at that point, I know there's going to be enough prosthetic height. I know there's going to be not a problem with the smile line, and, and that's what I do. Gotcha. So you're measuring that on the CT, and then you've got a way to measure that during surgery. You're not necessarily using a bone reduction guy. You're just using those landmarks, and then you're knowing that, okay, and then I'm going in with a, with a 12 millimeter implant. Yeah. I mean, I'm, what I do is I'll, I'll place the implant on the CT, and I can see is it roughly halfway down the socket, three quarters of the way down the socket. And I, I just go in and I reduce the bone to that level. It's not to the millimeter. I don't need it to be that, that you know, accurate. Um, but by doing that, I've, we've never had a problem. And, and I believe that's one of the keys to our success. Yeah, you've, you've got to get the junction of that, um, that interface of that zirconia up out of the smile line so that when they smile, all they see is either pink porcelain or teeth. So you're not having that junction, and then you can you can do all the magic and where to set the teeth from there. And, and um, as long as you've got adequate bone up above there to support. And you're probably getting away from the infected bone and all the bone that, um, you know, isn't going to provide predictable stability with uh, the, the large socket areas. Is that right? Oh, 100%. Because, you know, I've always heard from docs, I, I don't want to take away too much bone. Well, the thing is, when you start to take away that bone, not only are you getting rid of infection or those areas that are fragile with bone loss, you're getting on better better quality bone down there. You know, it's just what you got to do. I mean, it takes me, I, I, you know, my videos are on Facebook. It takes me literally three to four minutes to reduce a ridge. And once you do that, you're in a whole different playing field of success. Yeah, because, you know, the, when, at the cross section, that, that ridge may be triangular shaped. And when you clip off the nose, you've got a nice, big, fat platform to work with there. And you've got thicker bone and the crest is, it'd be nice and big and flat as opposed to, you know, if, if you're working at uh, on on normal crest of the ridge there it may be thin and, and knife shaped or uh, you know you you're, you're running into other issues uh, f for implant placement so it's it's really not a bad thing to remove bone in some cases like these you need to yeah um, absolutely. the other thing is I do two do cap two cap scans I do one CT prior to extraction so I can get a g general idea of any pathology the sinuses even though we're staying away from the sinuses I just want to see anything that's going on. And then once the teeth are removed, and I'm all about expeditious uh, tooth removal when you're doing these cases, uh, expect, you know, on the same day. So we do a CT right after that. Uh, the patient's on propofol. We wean them off. All my cases like this are done with an anesthesiologist. And we take a CT, and then uh, as they drape the patient, I do a rudimentary plan. plan and I go in and do all the steps you mentioned. You know, I've done the extractions. I'm doing reflection, abeloplasty, implant placement. And then I'm suturing. Okay. So you'll do the second CAT scan after you reduce the bone or after all the implants are in? Nope. Once I remove the teeth, uh, the patient is then brought to the CT room. In between the room, I do the extractions in, and uh, I, we do a CT. So you verify your reductions, verify where you're at, and then you'll uh, plop them back in the surgical suite and place all the implants. So talk to me through that. You've got all the implants in. You said you're using BioHorizons. You're a big fan of those. You're putting your implants in. You've got six in the upper or five on the lower. And then what? What are we what are we putting uh, on top of these implants? I mean, are some sort of uh, covering or some sort of pickup impression, and then you're suturing around that, and um, are you using any other any, any other bone graft, any other um, you know PR PRF uh, membranes, or what? What are we doing? Kind of talk me through that real quick, if you would. Absolutely. So what we do is um, just to make it clear, I do the extractions, I do the CT. Then I do my flaps and the bioplasty and all that and all those steps. So it's it, that's when that's done. So basically, after the implants are placed, one of the keys is to really make sure that the bone is removed around the platform and the implant, so that we're going to put on. Now we're going to put on some some healing caps, and we advocate you know tall healing caps so we can index uh, at the time of surgery. We can index the uh, immediate dentures. So the laboratory now has a good index of where the implants are, the bite registration, and all that stuff. Um, so you want to make sure that that the bone is removed, so you can so we can place the healing caps. And what I do is I suture with in, with uh, individual you know non interrupted sutures uh, to the healing caps. The healing caps are then taken off. Uh, impression copings are placed open tray. And one of the nuances here is that in the four front implants on the maxilla. We use the hex impression coping so that if we need multi units there, we can uh, time them correctly for the lab to have that record. Um, we, we use something called a mirror tray. A mirror tray is an open tray impression. 
That's with a cellophane top. It's available through major dental distributors. We split the, the impression coatings together with floss and acrylic, um, you know, dual cure acrylic, and we splint it with floss, and we make that a strong uh, splint. And we take an impression. The lab gets that. They get the bite registration. They get the index impressions. And overnight, the, and the next morning, that lab creates a uh, provisional. The patient goes home with healing caps. So the, these patients are on propofol. They've been sedated all day. They're not going out that night. They're fine. We've never had a patient complain that they don't have teeth for a day. So teeth tomorrow it is. The problem I have with chair side reline, um, and I have to say, even guided ones, there's no way that that's going to be as refined, and it's no way that's going to be as strong as a laboratory process provisional. So this is better for the patient. Um, doing it next day is better chair time because now that the, the patient's out of there, the chair is available. Uh, no one's stressed waiting for the reline, waiting for all these things. And, and, and chair side relines, I've never seen one that's really done well. And why not provide something that's better clinically? Um, I believe safer because the patient is now out of the chair sooner. And I think this is better clinical dentistry on, on every level. Yeah. You know, I, I would have to agree with you on so many points there. I think best implant surgery is the one that goes fastest because the amount of inflammation and destruction and the, the problems you're causing by longer surgery is, is just going to, your healing is going to be so much more traumatic and bruising and swelling and all these infection problems. I mean, so the quicker the surgery, the better. Now, not saying that that should be sloppy, but, you know, you should be good enough to, or you're getting in and out of there and you're, you're getting the, the bone down, the implants in, the sutures in and just covering that thing back up. So I, I love the fact that, you know, chair time's reduced. And a, a, another thing that's a huge, huge selling point for me is I just hate doing lab work. I mean, the idea of doing, <laughs> you know, these pickups and conversions and all this, much, I mean, it's a nightmare. I hate those. Um, I hate lab work. That's why I love dentistry, but I hate the lab work. So I don't, anything I can uh, put on my lab, I do. And I, I know that, you know, they're going to do it better. I don't pretend that I'm better at those things. And I know that, um, you know, it's just going to work. It's just going to work more predictably. So I, I actually love that idea because, yeah, no one's going home after that surgery and, and going home and looking in the mirror and saying, how pretty is my smile? I mean, they just want to go home and sleep. So, yeah. It's ridiculous. And yeah. why, would you want that, why would you want the patient sitting there after a couple hours of surgery? Now you're going to fumble with a, with a denture, basically. You're going to realign it in the mouth. And I, as I said, I've never seen one that I've one that I felt was eloquent. Now think about this, that whatever you do that day or the next day has got to sit there for three months or four months and you don't want to take that off. You don't want it to break. And if it breaks, now you're starting to compromise the implant. So why not take a day, reduce your chair time, make it safer, make it better, make it easier. I don't see any advantage of doing the same day and that includes doing it guided too. Now, the, the only question I have only because I haven't done this before is, you know, what's that look like the next day? I mean, is there a problem with swelling? Are you able to get things back off and on? Because I've never gone in. The Everybody, next, you know, we, that's the only question we I would have. Discuss, well, that's the biggest secret. It's unbelievable that people don't know this. And we discovered it by mistake because we were doing some same day cases and the lab didn't get it back to us. Claudia Patch, my associate, my partner, my associate back then said, wait a minute, this is better. The tissue actually shrinks. The 24 hours later, that tissue shrinks down. There's no bleeding. So she doesn't even get the patients numb. She unscrews the healing caps. She pops in this beautiful provision of the lab has done all the work with and everybody's happy. It's the best way to go, in my opinion, hands down. Yeah, and, and I think about the things that you're going to pick up in-house, you know, like you're talking about things that are going to break. I mean, that's what's going to break on you. I mean, if you get something made at the lab that's strong and it's got backing and it's 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 all been pressed and cured and polished, I mean, that's not going to break. It's it's these, it's the pickups where you've had to cut out these oversized holes and use this, you know, this material that is supposed to glue to the other material and you've got all these inherent weak spots. I mean, those are the ones that are going to break. Yeah, they're just going to they're just going to break more and, and you're going to have five or six problems over the next five or six months, you know, repairing these, uh, you know, every other week until the final one's done. So I think having this thing made out of house is, is the best thing you can do. So 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 talk me through that. You're you know, you get everything sutured up. They leave with healing caps. They go home. They rest. They come back the next day. Kind of kind of pick that up. You said you you don't do that, but I know you've got a, an, an acute um, understanding of what goes on there. So it's basically just you're unscrewing the healing caps and, and putting the teeth on. Is I mean, is that all there is to it? Oh, yeah. The next day, and, and these are all on my Facebook page and my lectures. I mean, that tissue is beautiful. At that, you know, the next day, it's a whole different animal. There's no bleeding. 
you know, people talk about doing this digitally and all, and all that. One of the problems with that is when, when at the time of surgery, there's so much swelling and bleeding. You know, you're not going to get um, a good, it's hard to get a really good impression digitally at this point from what I've seen with all the scanners that are available. Um, so, you know, that provisional really is important. So I guess it's funny. Last weekend, I, I did a, a Facebook post and, and I only post things about dentistry. And only about this. And I found this article that was that came out uh, in April this year. Dr. Malo, who has the Malo Clinic, you know, very famous guy who's done doctor who's done this full art stuff with acrylic. But what struck me about the, what struck me about this article, I have to tell you, it, it's really kind of amazing. It, it was it's in Clinical Implant Dental Reserve. It's it's a, it's a peer reviewed journal, April 2017. Uh, Nobel All on Four. So. You know, he, he shows his documentation of 111 arches or 111 patient treatments. 23 of those 111 arches had, 23 out of 111 had resin acrylic fracture on the permanent. And that's a, that's a, that's a 79% success rate, in my opinion. When you have what we've done with, with the zirconia, with 100%, that's a big deal. That 20% could eat up your profit really easily. You know, that stuff's really hard on the patient and it's hard on the chair time. But he also said he had only a 60% success rate of the, the provisional. For some reason, 40% of his provisionals had, had fractures. And like you just said, that causes clinical problems when you're messing with that provisional during the first three months. You either want to be putting the implants in and not even touching them again or putting them in provisionals and not having to be messing with them again. I mean, the last thing you want to do is be in between. You don't want to be in temporaries and having to be fumbling with them, you know, every, every couple of weeks. Yeah. There's no in between there. That's gotta be solid. And that's why I like a lab process provisional. And like you said, there's no way they can do it better than, you know, uh, we can't do it better than them. There's, there's no way. So, um, what's your kind of healing time looking like on these? Are you looking at four or five, six months? I mean, what someone, someone heals well, surgery goes great. What are we looking at to, uh, to pick this case up and get it finished at? I wait three months. Um, I've been using BioRizer for almost 20 years now. Just the company I use. I like one system. It's been good to me. Um, I wait three months. And in three months, um, Dr. Patch will, you know, during that three months, she's tweaking, tweaking the uh, screw retain provisional to, to ascertain the right prosthetic parameters. And then she basically duplicates that. Uh, she takes an impression on a model and uh, that's sent to the lab and they send a uh, zirconia uh, full arch uh, restoration. You guys place that in there, you, you torque it down. Are there any other tests that you need to do for accuracy or anything else anybody needs to know about with uh, placing these full arch restorations? Can you, can you give any uh, quick hints for, uh, or tips for that? Yeah, I mean, we do, we do a verification jig because the problem with zirconia is once you mill it, you can't section it and solder it. You know, it's a one-shot deal. So we want to verify that at every level. So we'll do some uh, impression coping sometimes. We'll sometimes do a second uh, provisional uh, on the maxilla mostly, but on the mandible, usually that's, you know, four appointments start to finish. Um, and the way she takes the impressions splinted, really, she tells me, I mean, she obviously, when she tries things in, does it with a Sheffield test so that she's not stressing it. But um, she says she really doesn't have any problems. Great. And what do you, uh, what are you covering your access screws with? She uses uh, Teflon and, um, and then composite. Okay. Just Teflon and composite. Yeah. That, that seems... For the first month or so, yeah, for the first month, she may use Fermit just in case she has to tighten something down or something. But after that, she commits with a uh, with, uh, composite. Yeah, and that's that's pretty standard, I think, these days is Teflon and composite. I think um, I would I would encourage anybody to, to be doing it that way if they're not. What kind of follow-ups are uh, you guys having on these kind of patients? I mean, talk to me about, uh, obviously, these people don't historically have had teeth problems. Um, now they've got new teeth. Any any concerns we've got here? Any um, any follow up problems or uh, you know issues or just what's what's a normal routine follow up for these? They're they're perio patients, um, and it's really a non event. I mean that's the beautiful thing about zirconia. And, and going back to this recent study with with Malo and and at all and others, uh, he had about four authors in there, but that was his main study. He mentioned there that he had on the permanent prosthesis with acrylic, twenty three percent of the patients had peri implant issues. We don't see that with zirconia. We don't see any of that. There's no bleeding. Zirconia doesn't attract plaque. It's not porous. It rigidly splints the implants. We're not seeing the problems with acrylic. I do not understand why somebody would do an acrylic <laughs> final restoration at this point in time. I just don't. Yeah. It's beyond me. And, and especially with uh, the affordability of the uh, zirconia nowadays, it's not like, you know, it, where, where in the old days it used to be, you know, basically a big PFM bridge or acrylic and your costs were 
astronomical maybe, but nowadays with the zirconia, um, these things have come down quite a bit, so it's it's not inhibitive there. There's there's really no comparison in the strength, and the aesthetics are are definitely there too. So I, I like you said, I don't I don't see I don't even offer them in my practice to be honest with you. Yeah, I I either say hey we're gonna go to like an like a like a zest locator overdenture, or we're gonna go up to a full arch zirconia, and those are your options. So those would be two good right there. You know, I, I try to stay away from anything removable. You know, most patients would rather not removable. But you're right. I mean, that that's that would be you know, and then, what the good thing about that is you can always convert that uh, if you do enough of the you can convert that to a zirconia bridge in the future as a staging type situation. You know, I, I did a post this weekend. I, I, I don't know. I just after the success we've had after this five year retrospective and all the you know t- over two thousand arches and seeing and those are dentists from all over the country. So there's no doubt with 99.5% success of over, you know, 2,200 arches with dentists from all over the world, basically, you know, when you see that legitimate, and that's going to be basically peer reviewed journals soon. So it's not just me saying this. We've had a major university looking at the data um, and hopefully that'll be printed. So, you know, my, my point is that with that success and what, what I'm doing and what I'm doing seems to be against what everybody else is doing. We're not doing acrylic. We're not doing four implants. We're doing six implants. We're not doing multi in the abutments. You know, for whatever reason, that all seems to be working, but it's not what everybody else is doing. But I haven't seen that success rate from anybody else. Well, um, you're, t- you're you're trying to remove the things that cause problems, um, and every every system might have one little problem. So if you look at the top systems and remove all the little problems, you eventually hopefully you're getting something that's very refined and uh, scientific and proven and that um, is, is reproducible. And it sounds like you've got just that. It has. One of the, one of the big things that we, we really uh, dwell on is, is when we train offices for Teeth Tomorrow is we have training here for the, for the doctors and the staff. Because this is a team effort. You know, it's the phone calls. It, it, it's handling all the referrals that come in and all, and all the leads that come in from the advertising and how you process that and, 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 and put them in a spreadsheet and follow up. You know, it's the staff that really has to get this, the hygienist, the front desk, everybody, because this is a big deal to, uh, you know, deal with term- terminal dentition and edentulate somebody. Um, everybody's got to be involved. It's a big responsibility. So what Teeth Tomorrow is, is saying, you know, all right, you want to have a formula? Here's a formula. And we've proven it. And it involves everybody. So let's talk about that. Let's say, hey, um, I, I'm I'm really interested in what you're doing. I feel like I've done some arches. I feel like I've done some cases. I could do this. I just one. Um, I like I like processes and and protocols and um, you know systems. And and I don't have necessarily that in place. And or you know I want some of the marketing to bring in more of these cases. Um, someone wants to sign up with your program. Obviously. Um, two things, where do they go? How do they get a hold of you? How do they sign up? And then uh, what's all included in that? Obviously, you talked about, you know, maybe there's some CE or training for the doctor and staff, um, kind of some induction period or introduction to uh, the process. And then you're providing them basically with the blueprint. So why don't you kind of talk about, you know, I mean, I guess one, how to get a hold of you and who, who to talk to. And then two, uh, what, what all does that include and, and, and what that's going to do for them over the next six months, one year, two year, three year? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, we have a full-time staff, you know, it's, they can call 845-679-1280, uh, go to teethtomorrow.com. And I'll start off by saying that it, there's really three pillars here. There's five years of, I want to call it almost research, uh, you're clinically doing the, the clinical prosthetics and surgery and prosthetics in my office. We teach that, uh, we teach the whole way that the office operates, the, the, the infrastructure, um, and then we have the lab. The lab has been doing this for five years. The lab has proven itself. It's the only lab in the U.S. that only does this. We don't do Crown and Bridge. We don't do anything else. And then the third component is my marketing department. It's Teeth Tomorrow Media LLC. It's four companies based on marketing full arch. We hold the doctor's office hands. We place the ads. Um, we give them templated uh, Teeth Tomorrow Tampa, let's say. We give them TV commercials that are just proven with, with emotions and patient testimonials of actual patients, uh, print ads, radio, incredible website, teethtomorrow.com. If you go there, you know, it's a great website with national SEO. We do press releases. We're working with a PR firm in New York City. So this is a national brand that will become a household name for full art tooth replacement. And it's proven. It's out there. And what is the cost? Um, 
the cost is basically twenty eight thousand for the first year and twenty three for the second year. We offer a ten percent discount if it's paid up front. Otherwise, we get you financing through some different companies we have, which ends up being around twenty five hundred dollars a month. So we're talking about you know something that's going to attract full arch patients, you know, for twenty five hundred dollars a month. That does not include the ad buying. So we take my media company looks at your budget that you're currently spending on advertising, and we basically trade some of your current ads out because you're co-branding practice with Keith Tomorrow. So I am in my office here with Keith Tomorrow, Hudson Valley, but we're also Fishler Implant Dentistry, and they're kind of co-branded. So it's not like you're just throwing money away for this one thing. Um, you think about it. You get one arch a month. You know, we charge 31 grand for an arch all inclusive. I've had I have docs charging 25. But either which way, with the over that's involved, you are easily covering yourself. The main thing, Philip, about joining this is that you there's literally 250 locations that are that are carved out with zip code. You've now let's say you're in um, somewhere in Illinois. You, You've now carved out your territory where your practice is right now, and you've blocked out anybody from taking it from a million to a million and a half people. And, and then what that does, that brands your practice. It increases the practice value because now you're going to show income related to this product that no one else could have. You've set yourself apart. You know, so this is why doctors, we've had probably 25 doctors' uh, locations close out. They couldn't, they couldn't get their location because it was already sold. I mean, they're defined. So my, my advice to people is if you want to do it, do it. Do it fast. So that's great. You're looking at um, 250 total across the country. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. So someone's interested in that, they can go to Teeth Tomorrow. And uh, on there, you've got at the bottom a way to contact uh, for doctors, contact us. I know I did that. And your people reach your people reach right out to me. Um, let's see. Who was that that called me here today? That was uh, uh, Crystal or Colleen. Colleen, I you think. Know, she, she, she responded and called me and said, hey, you know, just got right back with me and started talking to me right about it. So, Well, let me tell you, what we realize is that as we build a franchise, it's not just about how many franchises we have. It's about how happy the franchisees are. So we want to do everything we can to make sure you're successful. And that's our thing uh, on every level. Our media groups, you know, we do calls every week or two to each franchisee to see what they're doing, what's, what's working, what's not working. The labs there support them. Uh, one of the things we offer is for doctors to come here after training and always come back and you're invited to come back and watch, watch me do these cases, uh, spend time with my staff. So it, it, we're, we're all inclusive. We're, we're there for everybody, and uh, we're all in on this. Yeah, it sounds like you've really got this whole thing figured out and, uh, and, and a way for people just to, just to kind of roll it in and get going right away. With this whole process, um, obviously, you, um, these people would work with your lab. So the uh, Pratow uh, Zirconia Bridges would be made at, at your lab. Obviously, um, you use BioHorizons, but... Um, yeah, you can use... You can yeah, use you any can other use many different systems. And okay. Most every system, um, basically, not to cut you off, but yes, the final product has to come to my lab from a quality control issue and uh, other other reasons. But the provisional, the next day, what we do is we train a local lab. And so far, it's been worked out real well where we have local labs that will take the impression and overnight uh, by the next afternoon deliver this provisional. The fee is usually around 1200 or somewhere around there, maybe fourteen. Um but for that money, God, you're, you're getting the patient out the chair. Your chair is free now. You're not getting stressed. And that provisional is better. Yeah, no, I, I think that's the only way to do it with those. I've uh, I've done it both ways. And I can, I can tell you, having something made at the lab is, has far exceeds anything I can do in my office. So I don't know. Uh, I, I, I just assume... That's the only way to go from here on out. What else do What else do people need to know about um, either you or your system or uh, the process here? And you know, I think we covered as much as we can in about an hour. So obviously, the next step for someone to just be to uh, go to Teeth tomorrow and uh, check out the uh, the website, enter their information, and give you a call. Obviously, you've got Tischler Dental Laboratory. Um, so even if they didn't want to do it yet, they could still do a lab case with you and try it. Um, oh. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, we have a lot of clients that are not quite ready for this. And, and I'm, you know, listen, at this point, I've done this enough to, to talk to dentists over the years of lecturing. And I know that I know the pulse of, of credentials. And I kind of interview people and decide if it's right for them. Um, I have some docs that I know are ready for it. They've done some full arch and they're ready to kick it and they're doing great. Um, other doctors, I don't feel they're ready yet. 
you know, they've taken a maxi course, they they placed 50, 100 implants. I knew docs have been doing this for a while. They get flapping, reflection of viroplasty, get full arch prosthetic, but we're also reteaching that too. It's uh, it's it's all I do now. I've lectured on, you know, pretty much, I've lectured on every aspect of implant dentistry over the last 20 years, but this is all I'm doing because I really believe in this. So so you've got seminars that you do as, as part of this or are those separate? Uh, I do a quarterly, I do a one day overview of, of the zirconia at the office here in Woodstock, New York. Uh, it's, you can go under a pratowcourse.com. Um, Pertau, P-R-E-T-T-A-U, course.com. And that's a one-day overview. Um, the next one's May 13th. There's still some space left there. Otherwise, monthly, otherwise monthly we do the Teeth Tomorrow franchise trainings, where we either have new offices coming or, or, or previous offices coming back with staff that hasn't been here or doctors that want to learn more. And it, it's just an environment of uh, teaching this success. Okay. So that's for your uh, Pertau, uh Teeth Tomorrow doctors. But you've got a... Uh... You said pratowcourse.com or something uh, of that nature? Yeah, it's given quarterly. The next one's Saturday, Saturday, May 13th uh, in Woodstock here. We're close to, you know, four airports. Um, and the easiest one to fly into is Newark from anywhere in the U.S. It's usually nonstop, and it's about an hour and 40 from there. Uh, for me, about an hour and 20, uh, but an hour and 40 in general. But um, it, um, it gives an overview, and we have a lot of doctors that just use the lab, you know, and, and don't, are not part of the franchise. Yeah. For various reasons. So you've 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 at least got options for people that say, hey, uh, you know, I'm not I'm not ready to do this franchise thing yet, but maybe they'll bite off the course and start using the lab, and you know, maybe uh, maybe that gives them the nudge to say, yeah, hey, this is right for me, or or hey, this is either not something I'm interested in, or you know, maybe it's over my head at this point still, but at least gives them an introduction to that. Um, but you could also help find some of those things out on a phone call or a conference call or some of your screening processes too. So there's obviously it needs to be a good fit for both parties for this kind of thing. Oh, hundred percent. It's a vetting process on both levels, but what we, what we are doing is a hundred percent legit and people are realizing that, you know, you know, we've worked hard for five years and we're, we're here to roll, roll this out and share. Is there anything that I've left out or, uh, you feel like you'd want to uh, explain because I, I know, uh, you know, we don't script these conversations. I'm just kind of asking any questions that I think people would want to hear. Is there anything that maybe you think we haven't covered yet that um, someone might be interested in? Or or once again, what's what's the best way for people to get a hold of you? Yeah, I mean, my email address, I love emails. It's uh, my initials, MT at TischlerDental.com, T-I-S-C-H-L-E-R, Dental.com. And emails are certainly always welcome. You know, I, I think another part of this is I've spent a lot of years doing what, you know, what Carl Misch used to call FP1 prosthetics, cement retained, where we weren't removing bone and we were placing implants in these perfect positions and cementing, you know, PFMs at that point on an abutment. So the problem I have with that now is to do that is more difficult because the implants have to be in the exact position. And the other reason I don't like that as much now is it's not retrievable. And I like retrievability. I like the fact that my patients with Pertau and these Teeth Tomorrow patients could smile as big as they want forever and not worry about gray areas, recession. I'm not dealing with gum issues. Uh, they stay clean. They water pick them. And I, I just feel it's the best solution. It's really minimizing all the uh, the negative occurrences that can come with full arch cases. As those the, the negative occurrences with those cases are, uh, <laughs> you know, definitely, definitely not small things to deal with. So um, anybody who's done a yeah. couple knows that. Oh minimizing your problems on the front end is worth all the money you can save on the back end because there's the headaches that come with these uh, aren't pretty. So <laughs> that's well <Yeah>. put. <laughs> Re- retrievability yeah. and predictably are, are two um, really important things in implant dentistry. And, and it, it sounds like, you know, you've, you've got a good thing going here. So um, we'll leave with that. Obviously I'll, I'll uh, put in my show notes information for your email and the tea tomorrow and all that. So um, I'd encourage people to go to your website, check you out. Anything else that you've got coming up in the next year? Obviously, you're doing a lot with this. Are you uh, any other lecturing or, or big events coming out soon? Yeah, I'm, I'm lecturing on actually next weekend at the, uh, it'll probably be, I don't know when this is coming out, but it's May 4th through 6th in uh, Miami, the BioRising Annual Symposium. I think it's the third time I've done that, you know, as, as a big BioRising fan. Um, I see why. Um, I'll be there this year, the AID. Um, I hopefully will be lecturing there trying to get on the podium again. Um, but I would recommend anybody who's, who's involved with this to really join these organizations, uh, the American Academy of Implant Dentistry, the International Congress of Oral Implantologists, uh, just great organizations. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I think um, being on, on an organization uh, or, or being part of an organization, being on a, on a path for CE and mentorship 
Yeah, it is important. And I'm, I'm glad that you're involved with those because I, I, I think there's a lot that people in your in your uh, shoes can give back to people that are looking out for training. And so I, I appreciate, you know, the work that you're doing and, and the the time that you've had to share it with me today. Thank you. I appreciate the menu. All right. Well, Michael, we'll uh, we'll talk to you later. I, I may uh, scoop you up here in a couple months and follow back up with you. I'm definitely going to look in your program and see if it's a good fit for me and, and would encourage others to do so. So uh, appreciate your time and, and look forward to seeing you soon. Okay. Great, Dr. Gordon. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.